So I'm sure most of you know that the tech industry has been going crazy for the past few years. From massive layoffs from companies like Google, Amazon, etc., to the whole OpenAI fiasco that happened just recently with Sam Altman. But one thing that has been consistent throughout the years is the need for experience to break into the field. If you're a new grad or in between jobs right now, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of experience. Maybe you're like me and you're frustrated of seeing three years of experience as a requirement in the job description of entry level jobs. No matter who you are though, if you want to land a job in the tech field someday, you will have to face this issue. So I decided to speak to hiring managers, recruiters, and stakeholders to try and understand their reasoning behind the drastic need for experience behind all these jobs. So in this video, I'll be talking about three ways you can gain experience if you currently have no experience. Stay till the end though, because the last path is my favorite and also the most underrated way to gain experience. All right, first let's talk about why companies aren't hiring people with no experience or very little experience. You have to put yourself in the company's shoes to understand their perspective. Hiring an employee on the company side is always a risk. The productivity of the employee is directly correlated to the success of the company's business, so they tend to set higher bars depending on the position and the stakes it holds. Everyone is in the game of making money at the end of the day, so it honestly doesn't surprise me that these companies want to be net positive when it comes to their employees too. That being said, when someone with little to no experience comes in to apply for a position, in the company's eyes, it could be taken as a gamble, especially within the past few years as it got more expensive to borrow money due to inflation. That's why you might have seen startups starting to slow down their hiring rate, especially for lower end positions, because they don't don't have that much money to burn. Typically, the only companies that are willing to take this gamble are larger companies with a lot of funding and money to burn. When someone comes in with two to three years of experience uh, applying for a job, that acts as a stamp of approval from another organization or previous company, uh, showing that they are capable, at least at some basic level, to do the tasks or responsibilities aligned for the job they applied. Like I said before, I've spoken to several managers and they relate the same message, essentially that they will be more confident hiring someone with two years of experience over someone with none. Basically, the filtering process, uh, relaying all the basic skills or tools needed for the job has been done for them. Is this fair, especially for entry level or junior positions? I personally don't think so, but it is what it is and we have to deal with it anyway. Recruiting by itself is a massive problem that many companies face, having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars uh, to find headhunters, recruiters, referrals, and also for internship programs. For example, larger companies like Amazon, Google, Meta, etc. tend to have very good internship programs where they pay their interns very well and also have a lot of activities and bonuses to entice their interns to stay with the company for other rotations and also maybe a full-time return after they graduate. A lot of smaller companies tend to follow in step as best as they can. In fact, I think all my internships have been done in cohorts where they hire a bunch of different interns from different departments, uh, so just so it's more fun and enjoyable where they can host more programs and activities uh, just to entice you to stay longer or come back for a different rotation. This obviously saves some resources on their end. They won't have to train someone new every time, which reduces future hiring needs. All right, now that we understand why companies have very strict hiring requirements, let's talk about how you can get relevant experience starting from scratch. There are three real ways I recommend getting experience, and the first way is through courses or boot camps. I've made several videos in the past reviewing certifications I've taken or courses I recommend. In fact, I even made a video talking about how some of these certifications have helped me land a full-time job before even graduating college. Now, it's important to note that you can leverage some of these courses more than you can others. That's because certain courses have certifications that are strictly recognized by companies. If you've ever used LinkedIn before, you might be aware that you can link specific certifications or badges to your profile. This will obviously make you stand out and can act as a stamp of approval to a company who's interested in hiring you. Some of these certifications may be more expensive than others depending on the certification you are interested in. This is because certain certifications have a higher weightage or a reputation when it comes to using the tool that they're training you in. For example, if you take a Power BI certification or a DBT certification that is recognized by many companies, you're more likely to land a job that requires that tool and their skill set. I actually spoke to my director about this and he described it to me this way. Every year, there's an average of a couple million students who graduate from university. Let's say they all have some basic internship level experience and also a diploma from a basic four-year degree. Having a certification from a respected organization will help you stand out and put you on top of the stack of the list of candidates. That is why I always recommend taking these certifications ahead of time so you stand out from the fresh pool of graduates every year. I'll leave a few certifications that I recommend down below for those of you who are interested in pursuing this route. Boot camps on the other hand are a little more different. To be honest, most boot camps are just run by people who couldn't land a job themselves and decided to teach. These are the kind of boot camps that you don't want to join. They're probably just going to teach you the basics, give you very little assistance when you're looking for a job, and if you aren't part of that 1% who manages to land a job off these boot camps, you'll probably just circle back and be a mentor in those boot camps for the next cycle. The pay will be mediocre and probably half of what you actually deserve. 
I've had several of these bootcamp companies reach out to partner on a video, but I'm personally not interested in promoting something I don't believe in. The only bootcamp I would ever consider taking is one that offers a job guarantee. Bootcamps like this are taught by lecturers who have industry or field experience and also have connections. The keyword here is connections. These connections is what will help you eventually land a job, uh, which is honestly an amazing cheat code. It's also important to note that bootcamps tend to be a little bit more expensive and can cost anywhere from around a few thousand dollars to tens of thousands of dollars. They also take quite some time to complete depending on if you commit to a bootcamp part-time or full-time, but I do want to mention that within my company specifically, we have hired several people from bootcamps uh, ranging from software engineering jobs, data science jobs, or any other technical roles that we have within the company. Are these boot camps for everyone? Probably not, but to those of you who can afford it, I definitely do think it's a shortcut worth exploring. For those of you who can afford it, you can do what I did and take certifications or courses or go on to the next route, which is doing projects. When you do land a job eventually and are working for a company, what you'll essentially be doing is a project. Whether you lead a project, carrying it out from start to finish, or work on an existing project as part of a team, the dynamics and structure is essentially going to be the same. My point here is doing projects is one of the best ways to gain experience, especially applied experience with tools and skills that you will be using in the future. The scale of these projects can vary depending on your skill set and experience level. Everyone has to start somewhere. What's more important is that you start and share your work. I've talked about the importance of having a portfolio and showing your work numerous times in previous videos. Not only does it act as an extended resume that your employers can use to verify your skills and learn more about you, it also shows your ability to learn and progression throughout your career. An additional bonus is that you can build your online presence with a web portfolio. If you're in the tech field, this is especially important because I can almost guarantee that you will need experience with version control tools like GitHub or GitLab. I made a video sharing how I made my portfolio in under 10 minutes for completely free. If you're interested, I'll leave a link down below for you guys to check it out. If you're lost and looking for project ideas, there are so many different ideas on YouTube that you can use. I personally made several videos about small guided projects, walking you through basic machine learning and data science. And I also made other videos uh, talking about some data science project ideas for those of you who are getting started. You can also use GitHub and Kaggle as a resource to learn and also for inspiration on projects. Again, there are a ton of resources out there, so feel free to check them out. All right, the last and most underrated way to gain experience, in my opinion, is through an unpaid position. I've spoken about the crazy benefits of unpaid internships in some of my previous videos, but this also applies to other positions. Maybe you're currently employed and looking to pivot into a more technical position. You could take on more responsibilities without any additional charge as a direct way to learn and progress within your company internally. One of my coworkers did this not too long ago where they took it upon themselves to be the data guy on their non-technical team. They used their own time to learn tools like Looker and coding languages like SQL and Python and eventually got poached by the director of data science and now they're an essential part of our team. If you're still a student, you could find a teaching assistant or research assistant position or even something similar. The point here is to gain formal experience and possibly even a mentor who has renowned experience within the field you're trying to break into. Unpaid positions are everywhere. I personally recommend companies like NSTEM because they hire pretty frequently. A lot of people tend to get stuck on the unpaid component of the job, but if you can't land a job, you're going to be unpaid anyway. At least this way you will gain experience, make connections, learn from a mentor, and possibly even land a position within the company. My advice is to keep an open mind and always be open to new opportunities. I recommend checking out my other video if you're interested in landing an internship or are in the process of applying for jobs. I go through detailed steps on how to apply, where to apply, and stuff like that. To those of you who are going through this process right now, I feel for you. I know it's frustrating and demotivating, but if you manage to apply some of the techniques talked about in this video, keep your head up, keep an open mind, and stay resilient. Trust me, you will see success very soon. If you choose to take your own route and try something else, remember the goal in the end is to get these three things. A fundamental understanding of the technical skills needed, the ability to work well in a team and to have a problem-solving mindset, and lastly, proof of independent learning capability with no hand-holding needed. When a company puts up a position for hire, they're essentially looking for someone who can solve a problem or pinpoint they're facing. The more problems you're capable of solving and can demonstrate that through projects or experience, the higher your chances of getting hired. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.